What we're gonna do today is we're gonna work on how to figure out target notes. That song is an A major, and it's basically a one, four, five. Uh, you know, I, I changed the variation and the, the rhythm a little bit, but it's a one, four, five. So we have A, D, and E. Now, in uh, an A major scale, these are the degrees of the, of the chord. So we have uh, A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp. Those are the notes of the A major scale. Now, to find out what the target notes are per given chord, right? The formula to make a chord is every chord, uh, a major triad or minor, needs a root, a third, and a fifth. So what that means is the root is the one, a third, and the fifth degree of the scale. Those three notes make up an A chord, right? So what we can do is if you take that formula where you take the root note and then you skip over the next note, you find your third, you skip over the next note, you find your fifth. Now you can do that for each chord. So for instance, when we go to D, pretend this is one now, we're gonna skip over one the third would be our F sharp. We're going to skip over another one, and that gets us to A. Same thing with E, right? So we're going to go E, skip over to G sharp, skip over A to B. Now that formula is just one, three, five. So imagine on each root note of the chord, now this is one. You want to go to the third degree and the fifth degree, right? So that's how you can figure out per given chord what notes are going to work. So I know on my A chord, if I had an A, C, or an E, those notes are all safe, home base. Now, they're not going to all resolve as well as if I hit the root note, but they all really work good, and they have a different sound and a different feel. You know, so I would really highly recommend, you know, as the chord goes by, what I do is I take the chord progression, and when the chords go by, I hit each root note on the first pass. So I get to hear what the root note sounds like on each chord. Now the next pass, I'm going to hit the third, which is the note that makes the chord major or minor. I'm going to hit that as each chord goes by. And then the next pass, I'm going to hit the fifth of the chord to hear what that sounds like. And then what you do is you build your riffs you know, as those chords are going by. You learn the target notes to land on. You know, so it sounds safe. Now, what you should also notice is, do any of the chords share a common note? So if you notice, when we're going through the chord progression, the A chord and the D chord, they both share a note, which is the A. Yes, A for awesome, right? So what we're going to do is, if we're playing A and the chord's going by to D, we can land on that A note and still sound legit. Now, it's the root of the A chord, and it's the fifth of the D. So it's not going to resolve the same, but it will still work, and it will sound legit. So anyways, the only chord that doesn't work for is E, and it has its own three notes that work really well. So that is one way, C, C, you can learn um, the notes in a chord. And also, you know, this works for any progression. So if it were an A minor or whatever, figure out the notes in the scale and, you know, if it's a 1, 4, 5 or a 2, 5, whatever, you know, just figure out what those notes are, you know, and, and that will help you to sound like as the chords are going by, you, uh, you know what you're doing. So that's just one theory on how to do stuff. One other thing you can do in a 1, 4, 5, um, this is going to be for the chords that, you know, the root note is on the A string. What you can imagine is if we're in an A chord, Right? We don't have a zero fret, but it would look like this right? for our A chord. So what you can do, a quick easy way to find if the home base is A, the major scale or the major pentatonic you're going to play is look where that third finger is and that's going to be the first notes of that uh, pentatonic position. The first position, that'll be the first notes. And it's if you notice... That is, those notes are right straight out of the chord, right? 
So you know that those are. Always going to work over that A chord. Now, if you took the same principle and you went up to the D, now this will work. So the next chord is D. You can play right out of that D major pentatonic first position or whatever position you want, and it will work. As the E comes, right? I'm using that third finger as a as a bass to find out where that those notes are that first position pentatonic. So you've heard this in like Little Wing or, or other songs where we'll follow the chord. So we got like. Now that's the same riff, you know, I'm, I'm barring uh, an A major. I'm borrowing, borrowing, barring. <laughs> the B and E strings with my pinky and I'm bending up the G string. You'll hear you'll hear when the, the waver stops, you know you're in tune. Right? So if you're, you know, God, I'm playing the same things over and over again as these chords go by, use that to break up the monotony of, of the, you know, typical one, four, five. You can... And you can, you know, just um, vary how you bend the notes. You know, you don't have to do the same riff. You know, you can do that for the first one, and then when you go to the D. Next one. Right? And then, so also, use that uh, formula that I showed you and go over each position and find out, okay, well, when I'm playing the A chord, where are those target notes? You know, where's that A, which is right here? Where's that C sharp, which is right here? Right? Where's that E? Right? That's all in that A chord. Those are all the target notes over that. So now when the D goes by, right, you can already see where the notes of the chord are. Um, you know, you have that A, that shared note. Right? You have that, um, um, whatever. <laughs> I'm drawing a blank. But you can see where all the notes up in that first position for the D chord are. Same with the E. Right? So right there, I just outlined each chord in that first position. Now, if you want to carry that, you know, idea up the neck, find out those same notes. They're all going to occur, you know, in a four fret period. So take each one of those pentatonic positions and figure out where those target notes are and then just mix up the notes. And that is a really good way to learn the target notes that we can all land on. So I know this lesson doesn't have a ton of playing ideas, but you know, sometimes it's really good to just sit down and to actually um, slow down and learn, you know, hey, okay, like I said, take the A, D, and E, and you know, there's plenty of stuff to record yourself on, you know, free on the internet. So find a drum groove, play the A, D, and E, you know, to the groove, and then just first pass, find those root notes. Second pass, find the third. Third pass, find the fifth of each chord. And like I said, get to get to know that sound, you know, and the different um, 
the different degrees of the scale, how that sounds per given chord. And you can come up with tons of cool riffs and ideas, and that's really gonna help you take your playing to the next level. Also, one thing to, uh, to not to forget is a lot of people, when I'm teaching, you know, they're, they're shy and they're bashful and they'll just come up with a riff like, you know, okay, yeah, 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 and then, and then let off, right, as the chords are going by. If you don't know what to do, um, you know, just hang on a note. And chances are, even if it's not, you know, a totally perfect note to land on, if you got some vibrato and you're, you know, you, you sound like you, you mean what you're doing, you know, it gives you time to think. The next chord comes by. You know, and don't just cut off the notes when you can't think of what to do. Just hang on the note. That obviously, you know. You know, that short, you know, sustain of a note works in some formats, but you don't want to just keep, you know, cutting off notes. So again, if you're a beginner, don't be afraid to hang on a note. That's why I really stress finding out what those target notes are. So you can think while you're on that A and D chord, that's gonna work. Think of uh, a riff where you can use the string below, resolve, next pass, use the string above. So that'll help you break up your riffs. There, I bent into the uh, the minor pentatonic. Right, and it's something that I've gone into in a lot of the other lessons on this channel. So, you know, that's where stuff really starts to come together when you can mix major and minor. So, take time and learn those target notes, and then we'll work on tweaking that and breaking some rules and, you know, getting you to sound legit. All right, so, like I said, Really check out the Guitar Jam site. There is hundreds and hundreds of, you know, um, different theory, techniques. There's different styles. There's tons of stuff. The site's amazing. You know, I go on it all the time and check it out. And I really, you know, I learn a lot. I've been playing for over 20 years. And it's really cool to find another player that really breaks stuff down um, really well and really simple to, you know, simple things can be huge in breaking you out of a rut. So use all the information you have. You know, learn those different songs. You're like, oh, Skinner kind of has that sound. Well, learn one of the Skinner songs that he taught on the Guitar Jams, or Marty songs, that's the one, <laughs> site. And really start to incorporate that stuff and listen to how guys hang on notes and, you know, little slides that they do. <laughs> All those little tiny inflections that really make guitar players sound like they know what's up. So, as always, thank you from both Marty and I for watching. We totally appreciate, you know, all the positive feedback and everything. It really is just awesome and it makes it really fun to teach. So, good luck out there. Work on those target notes and uh, we'll see you next time.